That means ready to get into God's Word today. Let's begin to read in Acts chapter 12. The Bible says, when he had apprehended him, talking about Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers, 16 men in all, to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Somebody say, but prayer. But prayer. Amen. Let's try it again. But prayer. But prayer. Amen. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers, between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Praise God. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Amen. When, there, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate, that leadeth him unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed out through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And the people and the Jews. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for reading of your word. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the anointing. Oh, God. God, I pray that not only one of us will leave here the way we came. God, that we'll be strengthened. We'll see you more clearly than we ever had before. God, I want to preach hope to the hopeless. God, I want to, I want to preach freedom to those that are captives. Salvation to those that are lost. God, I, I thank you, Lord. Heal those that are sick here or afflicted among us today. God will give you all the praise and all the glory and let the church say, Amen. Amen. I want to just Amen. bring out a few points quickly this morning. I want to talk about prayer. But prayer. Prayer was made by the church. Amen. Prayer. Prayer changes things. Amen. Wasn't too long ago, I, I, I think in Sunday school, we were teaching a little bit and talking about prayer. And the lack of prayer. How many here today can honestly say, when I pray, things change? Amen. But something every once in a while will get us to a point where we, we don't even pray. Sometimes we, we just go through the day and we haven't even took the time to pray. A lot of times I meet people and they'll ask me to pray. And uh, you know, I don't know, uh, you preachers in here this morning, but if you ever get in the habit of asking them, have you prayed? And if you ask them if they prayed, most of the time it's no. They haven't. They want you to pray. People call and say, we pray. The Bible says here that Peter was cast into prison by King Herod. And it says, but the church. It says, but they pray. But prayer was made without ceasing unto the church. I want to just talk about that for just a moment this morning. Because I don't know where everybody's at today. I know the Lord gave me this message beyond shadow of doubt. I don't know where you're at today. But I want to tell you if you're here this morning, a little prayer goes a long way. A little prayer goes a long way. I don't know why you're here, but I do know that you're in the right place and you're in here at the right time. I know that the anointing's here this morning. I know I have felt God. I watched God order the steps of the righteous man right here this morning. I watched him move through the midst of us right in here today. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when we pray, it gets God's attention. I want to speak about, but prayer was made. Prayer was made. If you look in verse number 7, the Bible says, the angel of the Lord came upon him. When we pray, God will send an answer. When we begin to seek God in this generation, I believe with all my heart, the Bible says, but prayer was made. And we find just shortly after that, Brother Harry, that an angel came. 
God will always send something. You may sit there and think, will it do me any good to pray? This preacher's telling you, yes, it will. If you'll get a hold of God, if you'll begin to pray, the Bible says that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and pray, the Bible says, but prayer was made and God sent an angel. I want you to look just right after that. In verse 7, it said, a light shine. Do you know what? No matter where you're at today, one of the best things that can happen is when the light comes on. So many times we feel lonely. We'll get in a place where we're depressed. We'll get in a place that seems so dark. We don't even know if anybody can see where we're at. It's so dark. When you begin to pray, God will bring a light into your situation. The Bible says in Genesis in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was up on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved and God said, let there be light. You know what that tells me God doesn't move in darkness God doesn't do anything in darkness God never created an animal or mankind or a tree in a dark place and then if you're here and you're going through a dark time in your life Bible says but prayer was made God sent an angel and then a light came on in that prison sometimes what we need in our life is just for God to send a light let me know where I'm at let me know what I need to do Amen. hallelujah somebody give the Lord praise Amen. this morning Amen. The Bible says then, and looking at verse 7, it says he smote him on the side and he raised him up. He raised him up. How many of you ever been in a place where you need God to raise you up? Amen. Where you need God to raise you up, huh, Sister Donna? Amen. I know as for me, boy, I feel trembling down inside my belly right now. Amen. I know I've been in places in my lifetime where I got so low I couldn't get my head up. I text people and call people every once in a while and say, have you got your head up? But the Bible says, but prayer was made. And when prayer was made and the angel showed up, the Bible says he raised him up. He picked him up. I want to tell you this morning, no matter where you're at or what you're going through, if we would pray and seek God, God would come in and raise us up. Oh my God, I feel well this morning. Tonight. How many times uh, we can go down through the Bible where people begin to pray, people begin to seek God, and God would raise them up. Talked about uh, Paul already this morning in a storm. God sent an angel to him. God sent help to him. We can preach about all the stories in the Bible that prayer was made. And when prayer was made, uh, God began to move. Uh, God began to move. He sent an angel. He came into that place and brought light into it. Uh, no more in darkness. No more in darkness. It says then he raised him up and he told him, he said rise up quickly and his chains fell off of his hands. His chains fell off of his hands. I don't know but there's been times in my life when it seemed like I'd take one step forward and I'd, I'd be pulled back to. I'd take one step forward and I'd be pulled back to. So many times in my life I get to that same place, that same line. Uh, you know, either at work or or with my family, or even, even with serving God. It seemed like I could get just so far. Been here before, but can't ever get to the next step. Always something holding me. Seems like whenever, you know, even in the ministry of serving God or with our church, we'll get just right there. And it's like, man, I just can't get another step. But the Bible says that when they begin to pray that the chains fell off his hands, the chains fell off. I'm telling you this morning, if we would pray and ask God, God God would, would break us loose from whatever it is that's binding us. He would break the chains off of that thing. I know I feel this down in my heart. When they begin to pray, the chains fell off. Man, I'll tell you, there's no devil in hell that can hold you no more. Woo! The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's liberty. Well, you know what that means? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom. Nothing can bind you. Nothing can hold you. I had a soldier on each side, Brother Harry. I got to quit now. I'm feeling this too strong. I had a soldier laying on each side of him. Two chains. Two chains. That's what your Bible says. Two chains. It's bad enough when you're dragging around one. Oh, yes, it is. It's bad enough when you're dragging around one chain. Everywhere you go, trying to find some joy, gotta drag this chain around with me. Everywhere you go, trying to find a new start, gotta drag this chain around with me. 
every time you get to church, then it just seems like God begins to move. You can feel that thing just bind already. But the Bible says he had two chains. He had a soldier on either side of him. Sixteen, four quadrants, let him in there. Sixteen men guard the doors. I don't know how many, how many devils you're fighting right now, but they're not enough when you begin to pray. I don't know how many devils has come after your family, but I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not enough when you begin to pray. When God can send one angel down there, oh, he can raise you up. He can break that chain, whatever it is. I, I don't know. I've been there before. I heard a young lady. I won't mention her name. She's here this morning. She smiles a lot, but she hardly ever talks. But she says she went home and began to pray, seeking the Holy Ghost in her life. And she said it wasn't too long into that prayer. She felt like, well, maybe I'll just quit. Maybe it ain't going to happen. But she said, you know what? I've been here before. I've been right here before to this same spot. And I'm tired of just getting to that same place. And she said, I, I made up my mind. I'm going to pray until I get a hold of God. Oh, my God. And the Lord, the chains broke that day. The chains broke that day. The Bible says, but prayer was made. But prayer was made. I like this next part. If you'll bear with me in verse number 8. And the angel said unto Peter, Gird thyself and bind up thy sandals. You know what he's saying? Get dressed. You ain't staying. You ain't staying in this place. Oh, gird up yourself. Yeah, guard up yourself and put on your shoes. I'm here now. You're not staying here no more. We're about to take a journey. We're going to leave this place. I don't know where you're at in your life, but if you've been fighting the devil and he's told you it ain't going to get no better, pray. Oh, my God. But prayer was made. And the angel come in and say, it's time to get dressed, honey. It's time to get your shoes on. We're getting out of here. You ain't going to be in this place no more. And they begin to walk out of that place. And if you look there in verse 8, the Bible says right there, in verse 8, it said, the last word says, and, he, and Peter followed the angel. When you pray, God will send you help. He'll lead you out. He'll lead you through the water. He'll lead you through the flood. He'll lead you through the fire. The poor family was in the fire with the three Hebrew boys. When you begin to pray, God begins to send help. Oh my God, the Bible says that Peter began to follow that angel. I need somebody in my life. I need God to send me somebody that I can trust enough that will lead me out of what I'm in. Amen. Prayer was made, Sister Kirby. Prayer was made. Amen. Oh, the devil don't want you to pray. Oh, the devil don't want you to pray. Didn't they? <laughs> help me, Lord. How many of you sometimes say, well, I prayed and nothing happened? I prayed and nothing happened. You ever have that one? I, I hear it all the time. Have you prayed? Sure, I pray. That's why I'm asking you to pray. <laughs> oh, help us this morning. Help us this morning. When you give up on prayer, listen to what I said in verse 5. But prayer was made without ceasing. Oh, my God. Somebody in here not too long ago, a priest, I think. On, on, a, on a persistent widow woman that went to visit visit a judge. And the judge wasn't even a righteous man. Well, wasn't even a God-fearing man. But because she was persistent, because she said, I'm back. I'm back again. I'll be back tomorrow. Because she didn't give up. That's why the Bible, this is a pressing way. I know it's hard. I know that there's no quick and easy fix. I know where I'm going right now, Sister Donna. I feel it inside me. There's no quick fix. There, there's, there's, no, there's no magic button. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. You can't sit there and, and, and find it. You've got to seek. I don't know what it takes to seek, but you might have to look under that book. And it ain't there. You might have to, have to tear open that box. And it ain't there. I don't know. You might have to get everything, line up everything, and keep right on looking. But not give up. Prayer was made without ceasing. Can you imagine God finding a church in America today where whenever somebody gets in trouble, that they say, okay, I'm praying right now. Two hours now, you take over. And two hours later, you take over. Because we're not going to stop. We're going to pray until God moves. That persistent widow woman went unto that judge and said, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. I need you to move for my children. I'll be back tomorrow. I need you to move for my kids. And the next day, here she is, old judge. Here I am, and I'm not giving up. The Bible says my prayer was made without ceasing. Oh, my God, an angel came and said, get up and get dressed. Get your shoes on. Oh, get your shoes on. Don't you, don't you, don't you get too weary. Don't, don't, don't get too comfortable in the problem you're in. If you begin to pray and this church begin to pray, don't, don't get comfortable. Get your shoes on.
shoes on this morning. I feel this down inside me. You're, you're about to move out of that place. You're about to come out of there. God will send you help. God will send you somebody. God will send an angel. He'll lead the way. That's why the Bible says that we we need to follow after Him. Oh my God. Look down there in verse number, number 9. The Bible says He didn't know it was an angel. He didn't know these things. The last four words of verse 9 says, He saw a vision. He saw a vision. I preached here the other night about Haggai, the prophet, and about Zechariah. Thursday night, I, I took both of them books and kind of tried to run them parallel with each other just a little bit. Haggai trying to stir up the spirit in everybody, trying to stir them up, saying, It's time. It's time to rebuild that temple. And then here, here, here's Zechariah. The two of them are walking together. Two prophets. They're in the same time period. Both of them have been down there in captivity in Babylon. Oh my God, you can be in captivity, but you can get stirred up now. Oh, both of them sitting there beginning to preach together. But there's a difference between the two. Because one of them is going to going to be working with the people. But the other one, he begins to have visions. In the book of Zechariah, the Bible says he has eight visions. Peter right here begins to see a vision. I want to tell you something. If you'll begin to pray, if you'll begin to pray, if you'll pray for your family, if you'll pray for your kids, if you'll pray for this country, God will give you a vision. The Bible says in Proverbs, for the lack of vision, the people perish. Peter hears body and saw a vision. Zechariah, uh, uh, Haggai is telling him, pick up something. Do something. Faith without works is dead. Just pick up a board and begin to build a temple. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, when they began to build a temple, God sent the vision. When the church began to pray, God sent an angel down there. Peter didn't even know it was real. Sometimes we can be in such a, a place where we need such help that we don't even know help's there. It, it, it may seem like I feel something. I'm not sure. I don't know that this is real. I don't I, I, Woo! I don't know I'm coming out today, but my God, he probably his soul a vision. Man, that's the greatest thing in the world when you can get down to the place where God begins to give you a vision. He began to see I'm leaving this place. He began to see I'm out of this place. He began to see the chains are gone. Oh, my God. Listen yeah. to me a minute now. The Bible says in verse 10, they came unto the iron gate. Sometimes what we're behind is, is so strong. Behind an iron gate right there. Behind Some things just take God. Sometimes you can't break out. You can't get out. I, I talked to sister, uh, uh, her piano player, just the other night. And I said, come fired up, revved up, and ready to go up. Sometimes we want to be that way. But when you get behind the iron gate, oh, we used to talk about Russia. Behind the iron gate. Talking about it being so fortified. But I want to tell you what happened. The Bible says when they come up to that iron gate and that angel right down there leading Peter out of that place and they had prayed for Peter without ceasing, that gate had to get away. I can picture it in my mind. They're walking towards that gate. They ain't grabbing hold of the lock. They don't need no key. That gate just starts opening on its own accord. The Bible says that gate just opened on itself. Oh my God! There's no devil in hell can hold you down this morning. There's no devil in hell that can keep you where you're at. When they begin to pray, God began to move. Somebody give the Lord a big praise this morning. Amen. Oh, I love that, don't you? Which opened to them on his own accord. Which opened to them, Sister Carla, on its own accord. An iron gate. Man, I'd like to stay there for about 10 more minutes. But I'm not going to. I'm going to move on. An iron gate. Standing there looking strong. Who am I preaching to this morning? Standing behind an iron gate. Looks like there ain't no way out. It's too wide. It's too heavy. It's too tall. It's an iron gate. Just sitting there. One on one side. You can look and see others and see freedom. Oh, it's a gate now. You can look through that gate. This is heavy on I me mean, this morning. Think about it this morning. That iron gate sitting there. But when they begin to pray. Oh, church. God told me last night to tell people, pray. Praise talking to Him. Praise asking Him to help. Praise saying, God, I can't do it. But you can. Prayer saying, Lord, I need your help. Prayer saying, Lord, it's too heavy on me. Life's become too much. Oh, God, God moves with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Prayer, that's what prayer is. They begin to pray. They come up out of that gate. Sister Donna, we could shout about it. That gate had to open. It had to open. It had to open. There's things in our lives 
They look so closed. They look like they've been boarded up for years. But it has to give way. It'll open. It'll open. The Bible says that God will open the door that no man will close. Listen to me a moment as we go a little further. In verse number 11, I'm almost done. If Sister Michael wants to preach, she can. But I want you to listen to verse number 11. And when Peter was come to himself, you know what he said? I'm delivered. He had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Oh, when he came to himself. When he came to himself. When he realized what had happened, he, he said, I, he's delivered me. He's delivered me. I mean, I don't know how many hours it's been. I don't know how long he's been in there. But I know when he got there and there was four quadrants of soldiers, there were 16 men. And they're going to guard the door. They're going to guard him. And here's one little old Peter. I mean, he has had that moment in his life. He did cut that man's ear off. Yeah, he's a dangerous guy. There ain't no doubt about it. We better get a lot of people after this dude. He's unpredictable. Yeah, that's right. And then they've got 16 men leading him in there. 16 men. But prayer was made. But prayer was made. Ah, but prayer was made. It made a difference. When somebody began to pray, the Bible says the church, if you go on and read it, it'll talk about the women down there. I think the, the lady's name that uh, is Rhoda down there that, that Peter's going to meet in a little while. He's going to go to their house. He's going to knock on their door. Somebody said, we're going to pray. Somebody said, we're going to pray. Listen to verse 2. We started, we, 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 well, we started with verse 4. In verse 2, and they killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Oh, sometimes bad news will come right as it's happening to you. Right as it's happening to you. Peter's, Peter, I don't know, Sister Donna, but now Peter knows John's just been killed. John's been killed, and now he's held captive. Now Herod's finally got him. Now he's in the prison. Now he's one man against 16. Now he's shackled with two chains on him. Now there's a soldier on both sides, and John was just killed. Maybe he's laying there that night thinking about, Lord, why'd you let him die? Lord, what? maybe this is your will for my life. I want to tell you in here this morning that when you begin to pray, you'll find the will for your life. You won't settle for something else. Don't let some devil tell you that this is going to happen to you. Don't let some devil tell you that you don't deserve anything better. Don't let some devil tell you that you're not more than a conqueror. That you can't get through this thing. Just pray. Just pray. When they begin to pray, God sent an angel and he said, get up and get dressed. Get your shoes on. You're out of here. I know John's already gone. I know that. But Peter, you're, no, you've got a work to do. Get up and let's go. Woo! My God. Just pray. Just pray. Amen. Just pray. You might feel this this morning. Amen. Feel God's anointing all in this place. This God's about to bring somebody out. Sister Micah, somebody's about to come out. God's about to deliver somebody. Don't even know it. Don't even know it. I sat there thinking whenever God gave me this message, I began to read it. Peter didn't even know it. He's, he's just following the Spirit. He's just following the Spirit. Oh, that's deep. He's just following the Spirit. The flesh hasn't even caught up yet. Oh, ain't that good? Flesh ain't even coming to the, the reality. We, we, we talk about reality TV programming. They ain't got nothing on the Bible. Oh, here's Peter. Uh, I think it's Paul that once wrote to us and said, whether in the Spirit or in the body, I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't even tell you. Uh, I, I might have been just Spirit right then. Peter's sitting there. He's, he, he, he's, he's in such a place where his body ain't even caught up with him. His flesh ain't even caught up. Because if his flesh caught up, it might have said, no, 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 you're seeing things. Well, he was still back there in jail. Well, he's still back there with the chains on. But the angel come down here. Oh, shone a light into that place and raised him up and said, come on, come on, we're leaving. We're leaving. Amen. Walking out the, the first ward. Where am I going? What's, up? What's going on? His body didn't even caught up with him yet. He gets outside. The angel says, I'm out of here. You got it. And then he comes to himself. Oh, somebody in here this morning, you're going to leave. And when you leave, you're going to drive home thinking about what's happened today. Mm -hmm. I feel that down inside me. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, hold a minute. I'm free. Mm -hmm. I'm delivered. Uh -huh. I am free from this thing. I'm free. Oh, praise God. Mm -hmm. Peter got down there, so you know the story real well. Got down there to the to, to the uh, the ladies praying at the church house. He begins to knock on the door. Yeah. Rhoda runs to the door. She don't open it. She says, "Who is it?" 
He says, it's Peter. The Bible says she knows his voice. Oh, aren't you glad the Lord knows your voice? <coughs> I'm so glad he knows her voice. She's so excited. She leaves him standing out there. It's a good thing that angel told me to gird up yourself and get that robe and all that kind of stuff on. Standing out there in the street. She's so excited. She's running back in there. She's having church, folks. She's having church now. She's running back in there and telling everybody, Peter's at the door. And they're saying, he's not at the door. He's down there in the prison. She's saying, he's at the door. Peter's at the door. God's brought him out of that prison. We begin to pray, and God brought him out of there. My God, he's at the door. Woo! My God. Peter's at the door. We pray. I mean, have you ever prayed and, and God move on it? Have you ever prayed Malachi and said, Lord, help me to do this? I, I, and God move on it? Sister Christia, when you pray and God begins to show you the harvest and He begins to bring this thing together, I mean, it'll make you shout. It'll make you want to say, God is good. Woo! He's Woo! at the door. Let's all stand this morning. Brother Keith, come get me a song. Elijah.